Alright, so if you play Realm of the Mad God, you'll probably know what Oryx Sanctuary is and the boss fights within the dungeon. So if you don't, here you go. Chancellor Dharma, aka Knife Boy, Treasurer Gemspock, the Avarice Dropper, Archbishop Lakorix, the Literal Terrorist, and then Beza, the <laughs> For those who have a basic understanding of each boss fight are aware that each of these bosses have breaks in the phases called staggers. To put it in the context of Realm, a stagger is where the boss stops attacking nearby players because a great amount of damage has been dealt to them. The only boss without a stagger is Archbishop Lakorix. He's too cool for that. In this video, I'll be talking about how each stagger slash counter works and how to combat them, including Lakorix counters, which I know a lot of people actually struggle with. Let's start off with Dharma. This one is kind of tricky, so I'm going to start off with it. The boss fight starts off with him doing a speech. If he completes a speech, he'll start the fight as normal. However, if he's interrupted during the speech, then he gets kind of pissed. The entire group is sickened, and Dharma then proceeds to do a knife phase. This is basically the culling mechanic, which is somewhat problematic because if someone decides to proc this counter, then it can cause a lot of newer players to die or have to nexus. You know, it's just, just kind of rude, really. Keep in mind that during this first knife phase, the entire group is sickened. After Dharma's first phase, he'll then go into the phase where you have to circle around him. You'll know you're on the first phase because there'll be parametric axe projectiles circling around him. Wow, that's, that's quite the tongue twister. Parametric axe projectiles, say that ten times, huh? If you do enough damage to him, he'll stop shooting and his defense will drop to zero. You'll know if this happens because he will say the phrase, GAK! Exclamation mark. No. During the stagger, you need to make sure you don't get hit by any of the lingering shots because after the stagger, the entire group will be sickened. Bloodshed portals will appear and the knife phase happens again. Dharma can also be counted on suns. This is the phase where portals are all over the place and the group stands on the carpet or at a 90 degree angle. The difference between this type of counter and the previously stated counter is that the sicken is instant, meaning you have no time to use health potions before hit with the sicken. Also, here's a bit of a shocker, I only learned this recently, so here. Miasma can also be staggered. If enough damage is dealt within the first few seconds, then Dharma will instantly despawn the sickening portals and bring back the bloodshed portals. I've done small miasmas before, but I don't ever recall seeing this happen until recently. Also, the best way to know if you've hit a counter is to look out for the phrase in chat. I know a lot of the complications people have with this phase comes down to people's frame rate dropping when the portals spawn, but I'll be giving a couple of tips to go about completing the knife phase. Basically, if you're on a low to mid speed character such as Wizard or Necromancer, holding down your left to right keys whilst also edging down is a very good tactic. If you're on a high speed character such as Rogue, it's a little bit harder due to the fact that if you misstep you can easily eat 2 or 3 knives, and since you're sickened you have no way of getting that health back until the phase is over. On a high speed character, I recommend quickly tapping your WASD keys instead of holding them down. If you're good at dodging, this knife phase is actually a really good time to get damage in as Dharma is vulnerable throughout most of the counter. Alright, so let's move on to Gemsbok, shall we? This one's actually quite a bit easier to understand. Gemsbok has two staggers and two counters. During his first phase where he's jumping around like a lunatic, if he's taken quite a bit of damage he'll kneel down to catch a breath for a moment. During this time his defense is dropped to zero and you'll have a couple of seconds to just wail on him. During his quote unquote rotation phase, which most people just safe spot nowadays, he can no longer be staggered. You just need to keep shooting him until he gets pushed to the next phase. See? It's quite a bit simpler actually. Gemsbok's first counter is also present on the first phase. After you stagger him, he will teleport to the middle of the room. During this time, it's not really advisable to shoot him too much. If enough damage is dealt to him on the mid teleport, he'll say one of three phases. You're pushing your luck beggars, this brutish battle is belief me, or know your worth miscreants. If this occurs, the group is then weakened for 15 seconds. Do note that if Gemsbok is staggered a second time, it would be somewhat advisable to actually risk the counter because most of the time it will hit the threshold to be pushed to the next phase. Gemsbok's other stagger encounter come in the form of his coin selection phase. It's as simple as you probably think. If you select the right coin, he'll say the following. His defense will be reduced to zero and he'll stay like this until he says, you'll pay for that cheap shot. However, if you select the wrong coin, then kiss your ability and movement speed goodbye for 30 whole seconds and prepare to put your dancing shoes on nice and tight. Gemsbok group quiets and slows for a whole 30 seconds then proceeds to shoot out a barrage of shots from a quadrant. If you select no coin, I've never seen this ever, he says the elusive phrase, time is money, then proceeds to do the same counter as previously stated. The way of combating this counter is pretty straightforward if you know how to dodge. Go to the quadrant as far away from Gemsbok as possible. There's no point standing in the group because all of the shots pierce and you won't be getting any healing from allies apart from, you know, the odd snake oil or two. Honestly, it's quite a painful statement to say, but <laughs> just dodge. It's the best advice I can give for this. There's no set pattern, but try to avoid the pet stasis if possible. And on to the next. Lakorix. Oh boy. 
The Karix doesn't have any staggers, however he's probably one of the most brutal counters to newer players. The Archbishop's counters are avoidable, it's very easy to spiral down into a row of counters if no one's doing damage to the boss in between the instances. So let's get into it. You see this boy, this, this round boy, this uh, voluptuous boy, this is an orb. If one of these orbs reaches the Karix, he gets very, very angry and rains chaos onto the battlefield. I'll briefly explain it further. Lakarix's fight is split into four parts. He starts at the top of his cathedral, then goes to the middle, then goes to the bottom, and back to the middle until death. I'm going to explain it in the form of 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. 1A is top of the room, 1B is middle of the room, and then dark mode is 2. So dark mode bottom of the room would be 2A, and the middle of the room dark mode would be 2B. I hope that makes sense. If a light orb makes contact with him, he'll say the following phrase. How do you complete this counter? Honestly, a lot of the difficulty of this counter comes from people panicking. So, honestly, stand still for as long as possible until you need to move. The shots come down pretty slow, so for a phase like this, it's genuinely not that hard. The light beams do a crap ton of damage, a whopping 300 armor piercing. If you get stuck between two of these, that is, yep, 600 damage. However, these shots come down with an indicator that lasts around 1.5 seconds before striking. The ninja star shape shots do a base damage of 220, however they don't armor pierce. They do inflict a micro paralyze which could screw you over however. Let's go on a counter 1B. When you're doing the metal rotation, or leeching, and an orb reaches him, he'll say the following phrase. There are two very different ways of approaching this counter. One is as simple as standing in the far corner of the room, taking your hands off the keyboard and going to make a sandwich. It's more or less a safe spot in this phase. If you're an experienced O3 player, there's a way to guarantee your way back into the rotation without having to worry about getting paralyzed or shotgunned by a chandelier. It's as simple as jumping over the first lightning and circle around the Karix on the counter. You may take a stray shot or two, but you'll usually be fine if you're wearing good equipment. To be honest, counter 2B is the same as counter 1B, with a bit more damage, hence why I use 2B footage here. Alright, <laughs> so onto the big one. Possibly the most deadly phase in Oryx Sanctuary to newer players, maybe beaten by Celestial. Alright, so Lakorix counter 2A. <laughs> this counter happens when the Dark Orb makes direct contact with Lakorix when he's at the bottom of the cathedral. When this phase is triggered, Lakorix will say, The symphony of screaming chaos is like a joyous choir to my ears. But if you put it into Google Translate, it actually says, You're fucking dead, kid. Lakorix turns the cathedral into an every man for themselves dodging free for all. It has a similar pattern to counter 1A, however, it's a lot faster and the shots do a fair amount more damage. This is probably the part of the video where people are going to have to watch it multiple times to understand it, to be honest. <laughs> there are two main ways of tackling this phase. One of them is to pick a corner and dodge within that corner and pray you don't get hit by a stray paralyzed shot coming. The lightning comes down relatively quick, but you have a good amount of time to reposition between each wave. Here's the way that I do it. I honestly recommend doing the same because it helps a crap ton. As soon as the phase starts, I rotate my screen 90 degrees so I can clearly see the lightning bolts coming down. The first thing I do is I look where the paralyzed shots are coming down and I get into position of the paralyzed shots. After that, that's when I focus on dodging the lightning. So honestly, first of all just get in position where you won't get hit by the paralyzed because getting locked in by crowd control will probably just lead to the instant death of your character. And honestly, it's just a rinse and repeat process. The difficulty level doesn't really get harder, you just need to make sure you don't choke. An alternative way of doing this phase is to pick a corner and slowly edge to another corner. When I do this method, I usually start from the top right and try to end up in the bottom right. Follow the same pattern as previously stated and try and move more to the right the more you go down. Long story short for Lakarix counter, shoot orbs, if not, dodge the paralyzed shots or die. <laughs> and last, but definitely, Definitely also least, we have- <laughs> I'm gonna keep this one short and snappy because it's genuinely so easy to grasp. There's a pattern for Bezer's phases which people don't actually know, but first I'll explain the basics of Bezer. He charges around a lot, but what if I was to tell you there was actually a telegraphed moveset? The Chief actually has a pattern in which he attacks, which people don't know because the phases take fucking ages. So it goes a bit like this, circle phase, chase phase, stagger phase, circle phase, chase phase, stagger phase, you know, it just, it just goes like that on and on and on. It's really really good and effective to know the pattern of circle chase stagger. It's really effective because it's a good telling of what phase is about to occur and when it's time for you to be able to stagger. However, near the beginning of the fight, Beza is able to chain the forces at infinite phase with the spineless runts phase. These are both staggerable phases. Notice how at the beginning of Beza's fight he starts in the middle? That's the start of the pattern. After this, he then chases the group. 
and after this chase phase, he then does something that I refer to as spineless charges, due to the phrase, spineless runs, stand your ground and fight. You can stagger spineless charges, and for those who don't know, when Bazer staggers, he kneels to the floor. After wailing on him, he puts a big banner in the middle which silences the group for 15 seconds. A question that I've actually been asked a couple times is why Bazer is sometimes vulnerable during his counter, and sometimes he's not. There's a pretty simple answer for this. Since Bazer is heavily based off of HP thresholds, if you push Bazer to his next set of phases, he will be invulnerable until the next phase starts. If you do enough damage to him, you'll stay invulnerable for the counter and you're forced into this kind of survival phase type ordeal. Remember, all of Bazer's final phases can also be staggered, that being flanks, strike through, and control the outside. Of course, these final phases will not be invulnerable because it's his last set of phases, meaning there are no HP thresholds to hit apart from his death. During the counter, the best way to go about it is try to push him to the next phase whilst you're silenced. However, if you did get enough damage to push him to the next phase and he's invulnerable, try get to the other side of the room where Beza isn't. Honestly, it's your best chance of surviving. And honestly, that's basically it for that. I'll be covering Oryx's staggers and counters in a separate video. If you have any questions about this topic, please let me know either on Discord or in the comments. I hope this video was able to help maybe a couple of people get the first ever mini boss complete. If it does, please message me in game or on Discord because I appreciate all the DMs that are sent to me. Alright, until next time.